and for their grab everyone. And I believe this was also the team comp that had Vladimir, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and then maybe going with that Nocturne again, it worked out very well from last time. They got that double kill on Big Fat LP in the middle there. Genja is a fantastic Ash player. We saw it uh, quite a few times in uh, Kiev as well. He was phenomenal. Uh, I'm interested to see what they're going to have of the top lane. Whether that's going to be the top or the mid, I'm just not too sure. And are CLG going to go with a more of a tankier team again? They have got quite good damage there with Big Fat LP. There's going to be a lot of maneuverability, so what sort of thing would you expect them to go? We could see a Mordecai's come out here again. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's two good things for CLG here. So one, I think they pretty much have all the lanes predicted, that they know what the bottom lane is, and, and uh, you know, they know what the top lane is, they can send Meter to the jungle. Um, and, and so they can pretty much safely pick the rest of their lineup because the only sort of counter pick left is mid. And yeah, as you mentioned, Galio is absolutely an option here. Um, I don't know if Galio is the best champion to sort of lock up um, a, a Caitlyn, but maybe it doesn't matter. They just, well, we have enough damage because we have Ash and, and Ken and that it's fine. We'll just, you know, grab Galio and, and hold everyone together. But, um, you know, we'll see CLG's picks. I mean, it could be a top lane or a jungle here. It's going to be in su their support as well. And um, there's a lot of options open here. I mean, they could even go for a poke strat here. They could grab Trundle. Uh, they could let that... Um, now they're going to grab Muni here with Caitlyn. I'm, I'm surprised uh, at this melee support pick. And it's going to be Cho top lane. They really, really want uh, Hotshot to win his lane. He is definitely a great Cho'Gath player. We've not seen Cho very often this tournament. We've seen him a couple of times. Um, but if that's going to be the pick here, they're again pretty much picking triple melee into Janna, which still is something that they did against Dignitas and it didn't work out. They picked it here against Moscow 5 in game 1 and it didn't work out. That scares me a little bit here, but we'll see how this ends up working. And I'm not too sure about that Cho'Gath versus Ken on top lane. I, I'm not 100% convinced about that. That's assuming Ken will be top lane. It is going to be Vlad, so it's going to be Vlad in the top lane. So it's going to be that double Will of the Ancients strategy if Genja does lock that final Vlad in, which actually is a very damaging team right there. Yep, they're going for this AoE comp. It's almost the exact same setup as last time. And they're going for, uh, you know, this double AP. Will the Ancient setup here, Vladimir and Kennen, going to be pretty much wrecking the whole team whenever Ash lands an arrow? They can just... Oh, <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to make sure I'm not getting trolled or anything. But if they can land an Ash arrow, they have the Nocturne ult that can follow in. They've got a Janna AoE knockup and slow that can follow in. The Kennen can dive in with his ult, land a bunch of stuns, etc. I really don't think Shaco could be the pick. I mean, it's certainly a possibility. I, I've seen top lane Nocturne played before. I, I've seen AP Shaco played before, so who knows? Um, but there we go, back up to yeah. Vladimir, the, the likely lock-in. And this is all kinds of interesting lineup here. I like Moscow 5's lineup a lot better uh, than last time. Of course, it worked for him last time, so I can't really hate. But um, this double AP lineup worked against Solo mid. They're definitely going to be uh, in really good shape here. Nocturne did work out for him in the first game. Uh, Moscow 5 looks awesome. Yeah. It, they do look awesome, and it is a, a highly damaging strategy. Like you say, it's going to be that double of Willy the Ancients almost certainly up the top there. And, and you mentioned that I mean, they, they've let them have Janna again. They used Udira as the first pick, so St. Vicious is obviously saying, OK, this worked out quite well in the top lane. We managed to harass Darian. He's not going to be able to get on him so much this time. Actually, interestingly enough, he hasn't gone with Ghost, though, on Vlad. He's gone with a Flash instead. A lot of people tend to use Ghost. You can pull up Ghost yeah. away and slide that. away mm -hmm. <laughs> slowly. Yeah. Really, really but, fast. Uh, yeah, very fast. But, you know, St. Vicious worked very well within Ganks, but it's going to... I'm not sure how that's going to work. Hotshot's going to have to land that silence, and he's going to get in the stun, and then he's going to have to quickly burst that damage out mm -hmm. on him. Whether they're going to maybe try and get to the gank in the mid, but those that mid and top lane are very hard to capture with Kennen and Vlad. Yeah, it's going to be hard for them to land these ganks, which is once again on Udyr. I did like his Udyr last game. It ganked really, really well. And they've actually got a really similar thing at top lane here. Uh, okay, they're fighting Vladimir this time. It's going to be harder than Aurelia, but Hotshot's got Rupture, very, very similar to the Never move on Swain. And they've still got Udyr running out there. And actually, it's even easier to gank a uh, purple team at top lane. Yeah. The, the map layout is... is you know, such that you can actually get around and, and behind that little that little strip of land and get in even stronger ganks than before. And Udyr does need to clear into melee range. Um, that said, Vlad can camp in the brush and be a lot harder to to hit for the first couple seconds there. And maybe that's going to be enough to get him out. Of course, he does have troll pool as well. Uh, but we'll see. I think uh, Hotshot can probably zone him out for the first few levels. Um, actually, he did sw switch over to Ghost here, so, so Vlad actually in, is back to heal Ghost and just wanted to play very safely and survive for a long, long time and then late game carry it through. So you still going with CLG on this one? Um, I mean, I want to see the third game go through, so I want to see CLG take this one over. I think Moscow 5 looks really, really strong in this lineup, so if I had to predict, I'd say Moscow 5, but I'm hoping for a 1-1 right here.
Yeah, so we'll get into the game shortly, but, well, who do you think is going to win it? Moscow 5 or CLG, ladies and gentlemen? We are going in towards the second match of the semi-finals. Moscow 5 picked up a very good game in the first game, but, well, who do you think is going to win it, guys? Give it a cheer. All right, everybody, welcome back to the game. Following Hotshot coming out of base, going through the CLG lineup right here. It's going to be actually running towards bottom lane if they're actually going to initially pick up their lane assignments. This could be a lane swap here. I know we did see, uh, I forget which team it was, I think it was actually Moscow 5, run top lane misfortune to counter lane of Vladimir. Um, and of course it worked for the Moscow 5 have not lost a game yet. And it looks like they're sending, CLG are sending their AD carry towards this top lane. This Caitlyn, first point in traps and going to be trying to poke out Darien. Chester, a lot of wards, four wards, one potion, fairy charm. Took some damage from Alex, you gotta be a little bit careful there, but otherwise, looks pretty safe. A lot from Moscow 5 near bottom, so looks like they're unaware of the lane swap. Hotshot definitely camping this tribush. Looks pretty safe for himself. We'll see how this manifests. Actually, wanna look at Darian's build real fast, see what his opening uh, grab here. Looks like deep, uh, deep defense tree and 4% cooldown reduction from offense. Um, and yeah, you know, some magic pen, etc. So, uh, actually, defense tree Vladimir going to be kind of an interesting build here for Darian. So, I mean, let's give a quick Russell rundown of these teams. It is going to be Moscow 5 taking this 1 1 0 at the moment. They're looking very strong, and I'm not sure CLG going to have it in them. Anyway, let's give you a quick rundown. You can see it is going to be Hotshot GG. He will be at the top on showing our same visions here on your screens. He is as the Phoenix stance Udia at the moment, and Big Fat OP helping him do that blue pull will be uh, going as Ari. Down the bottom lane is going to be Chouster and Double If That will be Nunu and Caitlyn. And actually, nope. actually, double swap. Nope. It's going to be a change around from CLG. And actually, you know, Moscow 5 already saw that and they've already switched it up. So whether that's a case of reacting to it or I didn't see which one actually started off the swap. But for Moscow 5, it will be Alex each in the middle. He is going to be on Caitlyn. Uh, sorry, on Caitlyn. Kennan is the one I'm after. Diamonds is in the jungle on Nocturne. Just keeping my eye on the, who's where the first 100% crit shot was going to go from Genji, but he did use it on a minion. Didn't want to lose out too much. He is going to have Ghost of Pepper with him, we assume, unless he's going to start go roaming craziness. But uh, down the bottom, it will be Darian who has switched to be against Cho'Gath down the bottom there. Now, the reason for normally for the two down the bottom is obviously getting a bit more coverage on that dragon, but both these teams can react very quickly. So I don't think it's going to make a great deal of difference. The blue control is definitely going to be changed up a bit. Yep, we'll see what Hotshot's going to keep from it. He's doing a very good job last hitting. Um, this, this top lane actually double lift, harassing a bit on the Genja. The Ice Blast coming out as well. Double lift actually losing a bit of health there, but does have that one extra health potion. His Q does go out and smack Genja in the face. So the health advantage slightly in double lift's favor. We'll see if they can keep this pressure going. Now with Blood Boil as well, they could press in on the Genja. Really good shields though, keeping that harass from doing too much to him. So just keeping my eye down the bottom lane. It looks like Darian's a little bit too pushed, though. Same Vicious is coming down. I'm not too sure what the plan was, though. He's just sort of come down and goes, I'm going to steal some UCS. I'm off to you. <laughs> oh, I think they want to swap back. So they, he cleared the wave, pushed to the turret, and said, OK, hot shot, go recall. And you can see Doublelift as well, using Q pretty much on cooldown. And just you can see he, he's auto-attacking. He's got Blood Boil on. Of course, he'll stop to last hit. But you can see he's just trying to push the lane out so that they can get the lane swap going. Yeah, so he's just forcing it through. Meanwhile, I can see. Diamonds has got a peek in towards the middle, but doesn't go for it. Instead, he's going to go up towards possibly the jungle. No, he's just going to go back and say, you know what, we don't know where they are. So, as you mentioned, they are going to switch back around. And you can see Cho'Gath now back up the top there with that lane push. So, nice little switch around there. And Moscow 5 yet to react to it. So, question is, who would be better 2v1? I think Vlad's actually probably going to be better off. He's already at to level 4. Yeah, Once he starts hitting them higher levels, he can just quite happily farm up 2v1. But, but even even at level 9 or so, all you have to do is camp the brush as Nunu. Vlad has to get within 600 range to last hit anything. And whether he can blood pool or not, he's immediately going to be zoned out. CLG, uh, you know, with Hotshot, he could just use Rupture and Feral Scream. And even if he doesn't do a great job, he gets his health back as well. So they both, you know, will be able to regain some health. But Cho has a greater sort of range uh, from which to last hit, and that's and going to help him out quite a bit. Yeah, so you can see that Ash has gone back. Genji is bought a uh, Thorin's Blade, and Darian 
Oh, well, he's going to have to back away. He has been slowed up. St. Vicious is going to try and run in and close around him. Has got the exhaust down. Will pull away from that stun, but the stun's almost certainly going to land. I think Darian might be first blood here. Had to use his heel, but he will not get away. And Dominic will pick up the first blood for Council Logic Gaming. Very nicely done. Was a little slow to react to change there. Yeah, I think he should, could have ghosted a bit sooner as well, but a great, great job by CLG. That, that Kanko's phenomenal troll pool. Not enough to get him out of there. And you can see the uh, double lane swap coming back again. Uh, M5 going to put, uh, put Ash and Janna back at bottom. And you know, death is one way to get back to your base. You can go to top lane. <laughs> but I think the least efficient of the, uh, of the methods. Yeah, it's not the ideal method. And Ash now trying his best direction to pick up the last hits. Only Gale will go across, but uh, double lift lane down at Fidit. Damage on towards Goosey Pepper there. Meanwhile, the middle lane has actually been pushed fairly heavily by Alex here against Big Fat LP. CS wise is 25 to 41. So you can see Alex with quite a big advantage in that middle lane at the moment, but that's immediately countered. Darian does go down, and put that ward down. St. Vicious is going to spot that and just back straight away. So, okay, I've got three minute mark before I start going up that route again. Meanwhile, Hotshot trying to freeze the lane there before he gets to the tower. And Darian's like, no, I'm not going to let you do that just standing there. So he's going to try and farm it up. But uh, Hotshot GG, like you mentioned, he can farm quite happily. That was Chogat here against Darian. Yep, oh. Oh, what's no. up? No, it's all right. I thought St. Vicious was going to dive in the middle, but he didn't go for it. Now, Kennen now should be level six, which is going to make diving very difficult. That ult going to trigger enough to stun any two champions. So would be difficult for a gank to succeed there. Let's see. Bot lane, uh, Double Fresh is doing a really good job being aggressive here. You're going to see he constantly pokes at Genja. Genja has that Doran's Blade, Summoner Heal as well, so he should be pretty safe in general. But Double, if you can see, again, running cleanse without any obvious things to cleanse aside from Asher, which, okay, that's an obvious thing to cleanse, so never mind. <laughs> um, it's like, there's nothing to cleanse in that team. Then I look down, it's like, oh, right, Ash stuns. Uh, but, but still, you know, not really relying on, on getting into these, you know, and bruiser Kevin. fights. J J oh, yeah. Well, uh, sorry, who? Jonna? Kennen. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, fine, Kennen. Also, Exhaust, also, Jonna has a slow. <laughs> but, you know, I, I was looking at, at Nocturne and, and Vlad, and I was like, nothing really. And then, like, the rest line up, and then it was just wrong the whole time. Yeah. So, uh, Hotshot actually been a little bit harassed by Darian up there. He's quite happy to have him in the middle lane. And Darian, despite being killed early on, has got that amplifying tome. Hotshot went back and put himself a uh, cloth to go with those boots, is going to pour it back. This is something Hotshot used to do a lot at Gamescom. He just should push a lane a little bit and then just go back and buy very quickly, constantly doing it, and we're having to switch a room again. Yep, they're going to swap back for the counter lane, and it worked last time, they got a kill, so... Um, and here, Darian, I mean, they could have sent Udyr up there without red buff. Maybe they don't want to try it just yet, but... Well, I guess they do have ward coverage this time around. Darian has that ward right there in the river. The wood spot St. Peter's for the most part coming out. Now they're going to react to it. Yes, they have. You see Ash already gone back. Darian needs to be careful. Actually pops his ulti on double lift and says, you know what, I'm going to have plenty of time to turn around. I'm going to try and do as much damage to you as possible. You can see it's not a great deal. And Darian will go back and switch it up and go back down towards the bottom there. Let's have a look towards the gold. You can see he's actually 680 gold. He will get himself a second. Amplifying to him. Again, just back just in time to pick up these wave of minions coming towards him. Diamond's picking up a little red buff now. And actually, this switching is causing him problems because you would normally expect him to see him go for a gang by now. But we are eight and a half minutes into this one. So maybe COG uh, employing a pretty clever tactic here to prevent Moscow 5's ganks. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they're, they're so far untouchable. And you kind of see the Nocturne not be able to do too much to them. He is finally six now. Maybe he'll just go for it. But we'll see. I mean, there's, there's good traps, etc. Hot Shot's just kind of at his turret all the day, so it's not going to do too much to him. You can see that the minion counts. 70 to 58. Double up is winning these, these sort of trades here. So just keeping my eye on Darien back down the bottom. He's pushed in. Like I say, Nocturne was there, but he is going to pull it back. We saw Udi going back as well. Udi actually getting the Oracle fairly early on there. So it's going to be hurting a little in gold, and he's going to try and pick up as many wards as he can to cover it, clear them out. Darian, no, look at that. Darian being very aggressive on Hotshot, forcing him back, trying to keep him away from the CS, and it's working out quite well for him so far. So Hotshot needs to try and maybe switch it up again. He had gone for that fellow stone early on, though, so that will help him out. Didn't mean why Dar Darian's going for that Hextech revolver. Double lift, though, is doing a fantastic job at the top here, which is a little switch around. Like I say, he's. He's got a uh, 16 CS or 14 CS advantage. Triple Doran's played, though, for Genja, though. Meanwhile, Doublelift has gone for that uh, 
Go for that wall, back down the bottom. You can see Darian again having a little poke towards Hotshot, but he's got that life steal. He can keep just drawing it straight back. We did see Biglifat LP though again picking up his own blue there. And Udia now, is he going to go for an invade and try and help them out? Is he going to try and steal one away? No, because Diamond's already picked it up. Saint doing a great job of clearing wards though, which means that he can get a lot of pressure here. He's waiting near to Darian. He's recalling, but Darian sitting away from his minion wave. They didn't know he was actually that, that far back after him. They didn't have a ward near him, so uh, let that one go. Double if still pushing up at the uh, the top lane, and it's kind of a good thing for CLG that Chogaf and uh, Caitlyn are out CSing their lane opponents because Big Fat LP very far behind Alex and minions right now. And uh, they're going to have to rely on, I think, Kennen to, to get their victory right now because nothing else is winning for them. Yeah. He's not doing a too bad a job down the bottom here, despite getting caught out early. And he is closing on the level 9, almost got that extra revolver already. And Hotshot's actually been forced away again. 81 CS, 250 to 3 though, like you say, it is a pretty hefty difference. But uh, he still feels like he's got that lane control. But yeah, as you mentioned, Alex each almost got that Willy the Ancients already complete. Once they get that double combo, it's going to do a lot of damage when it comes to them team fights. Obviously, can both can be going straight in there. Alex is going to be throwing his uh, ulti across them, and then it's going to be followed straight up by Vlad. I'm just keeping my eye on St. Vicious again down the bottom here. Darian is going to push forward, but St. Vicious backing away. He doesn't want to go through anything too crazy. Diamond also hanging around, but Big Fat LP, he's not going too far up lane. And, and really, you know, it's a very hard character to pin down Ari. He can just zip away from any gank attempts. Yeah, they're not be able to get too much done here. Double up just finishing pushing the wave up to the turret. Get your should last hit there, but looks like Udi are coming around the backside on Vladimir. Might be good timing. There's Darian coming into the fray. Ghost being used. There's a silence being saved, but she should land that stun. Does get that just in time. Now can they do enough damage? The feast being used as well. Darian still has pool. There's the. Yep, there's the pool. Good He's gonna pool. get himself out of there. That had burned his ghost, so you never know what might happen there. Ashor comes across. Does not quite land a big fellow P. That would have been enough for a kill. But he did survive that encounter. So, the pings went down as well. Warned him that he was uh, coming down. So I'm not too sure whether Alex could have burst him down quite quick enough. But Darian managed to escape that one. Has got that Hextech. Building towards Willy the Ancient. So a couple of Willy the Ancients very nearly complete by Moscow 5. Meanwhile, BF Sword has been picked up by Big Fat LP. Big Fat LP was caught out, sorry, no, the dead double of, sorry, the, the, the BF Sword. Let's have a look towards that top. And St. Vicious just covering off for Big Fat LP, expecting to go back and buy. So, double lift has got that BF Sword, like I mentioned. And Ash, up to 100 CS, up to 109. So, very even between these two still, despite all the switching that's been going on. Again, just having to actually pick up the jungle while uh, Diamond is away. The ping's just gone down from CLG. On towards the dragon, Whether that's a case if they want a clairvoyance on it. Diamonds is hanging around saying, Are you actually going to come get this Genja or uh, it's Alex? But uh, I think he's just going to take it away from himself again. So, yeah, no need for it. And Kennan will make his way down. They've just pinged onto Alex, so they're well aware of this one. And they can see he's pulled out. Darian is down the bottom here, but I think they may well go for the cheeky dragon. I'm not sure if COG even want to contest it, though. Yeah, no one's making the move for it just yet. CLG doesn't even have map vision, so they have no idea. Which is odd, because they're the one of the early oracles, but, you know, they don't really have wards in many places. So, there is the dragon pickup there. Ash actually getting the last hit. Looks like 19 minutes and change going to be the respawn timer there. And despite the dragon, though, CLG is still up 1,000 gold. Of course, first oh, wow. blood was part of that. Nice ult there from Ghost of Pepper. Still taking damage from Double Lift. Down to 400 health, but looks like he'll make it out. Chouster going to zone him away and deny all the experience gain here, which is pretty smart. Yeah, that blood boil working very well, and that tower is going to go down. So double lift just completely hammering that down. There was not a lot that Ghostly Pepper could do about it. Obviously, his AD carry had gone down the bottom. Actually, I don't think he was needed down there because COG were never looking like they were going to contest it. Darian, though, is uh, starting to actually pick up his farm a little bit here. He's going to have to go some to catch up with Hotshot, but he is starting to close that gap. It is a 30 CS difference, though, which is a pretty big at this level of the game. 30 minutes in. Meanwhile, well. I'm never too sure about whether it's worth taking the towers down early or not. It's always good to take a tower. It takes the vision away from the imminent NB team, but it also frees up the lane. Yeah, it, it can it can kind of make it a little bit harder to gank the lane because they're so far farther away from your, your typical entrance points. That said, if the lane does come back, then they have no tower to run to, and it becomes easier. Of course, the gold advantage there as well, pretty important. Looks like actually Kate Nuna coming over for Darien. Oh, he lands the rupture of the silence as well. This is really, really bad for Darien. He's been exhausted now. And there comes the troll pool, but everyone is around him. A new new old goes by as well. Chance of trying for it. Didn't quite need it, but who cares? Pick up the kill. And looks like they're going to go for maybe another tower push. Maybe that's why they actually pushed the tower earlier. Said, hey, we're all going to leave to go gank bottom. 
Let's go move. Let's go stop Vlad while we can. Chaser actually taking some damage here. He's got to be a little bit careful. Only 400 health to spare. But yeah, a second turret now for CLG. They gave away the dragon. But they're like, hey, we can just kill Vladimir and push your base. And this is actually a really interesting strategy here is basically they said, hey, Kaelin, you have way more AD than Ash. Let's push while our advantage is still really, really massive. Because you can see the, the team count for Moscow 5 is super, super late game. Actually, a little bit of aggression here. St. Vicious getting away from Diamonds. And again, they're going for more turrets. So CLG relying on, on just a lot of early game pressure. And that's doing a whole lot. Oh, wow. Sorry about that, guys. Alex picking up a kill in the mid lane against Ari. But I like the strat from CLG. They're just going for early, early pressure. They built themselves a 3,000 gold lead from this, and I expect them to keep going. Yeah, they are going to keep going. Sorry, I didn't, didn't bother interrupting you there. He was pretty much dead as soon as I clicked <laughs> to it, so oh, okay. there's not much point. But yeah, big fat LP getting caught out in that middle by Kennen. So Kennen now with that Willy the Ancients. Vlad also with the Willy the Ancients. So will that make a difference for them? You'd assume it would do. And uh, Alex actually taking a couple of hits from that tower, as is Dar Darian. So they don't want to go too aggressive on that one. I'm trying to lay down a bit of damage on towards St. Vicious. They really want to dive and get rid of that Oracles. It's been causing them problems. I'm trying to clear out those wards every time they place them in river. And uh, Darian, well, you know what? He doesn't care if he's been ganked twice. He's still going to keep pushing up this lane. And uh, Double Lift is not going to let him get anywhere near it. You can see he's done zero damage to it. It's on full health, that bottom turret, which is a pretty big difference. And the top lane, that's pretty much full health as well. So COG have done a really good lane strategy here, actually using up the switching, which uh, Moscow 5 generally do. Yeah, but now it's, it's the Vlad solo bot against these two. And John and mid, I like the strat. John, I'm going to farm up mid, get really, really farmed this game and <laughs> crush face him with a death cap. Hey, we, <laughs> you may mock it, but we saw Reginald doing it at Gamescom. <laughs> That's fair, okay. Did they win? They did. Okay, uh, well no, They won that game, but not, not overall, obviously. Uh, oh, CLG yeah. won that one. But uh, Chogath has switched it back up, but Ken just been farming for quite a while at the top here, quite happily while this is all happening. 135 CS, two double lifts, 153. So he is still behind a bit, but he is starting to match to catch up. He's actually going with a different strategy. Yeah, uh, hawk shot in uh, Chogath there, making sure he backs uh -oh. away. We've got Darian actually being closed in on here by St. Vicious. He's realized it and already backed up out of position. He's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's something going on here, so I'm just going to back up away. Genji meanwhile having to keep him at bay and St. Vicious now thinking can I get around the backside of Alex? Probably not. It's not the ideal thing to go for. Instead he continues to clear out the wards and he is going to back away but they have a push down this bottom. You know what? They've got to be careful Double Lift doesn't get caught out here because I think a Darien and Nocturne combo could probably, probably take Double Lift down there. Yeah, I think it's possible there. And actually, I'm surprised because Double Lift had that Oracles. He walked right by a ward in the river and kind of let it go. And that's, that's why Darian had backed off from him before. And, you know, St. Vicious, if you're going to do that kind of ganking, you've got to at least throw the wards you walk by because they will run away from you. Oh, my gosh, the near miss on that Ash Arrow, a big fat LP in mid. And they've tried, I think, three to four times now to land these Ash Arrows into kills. And I had the great reflex from, from this Ari player, keeping him alive. Otherwise, the score could be like 2-4, 2-5 instead of 2-1. to one. Yeah. As long as we go in this game, the more fed Hotshot is going to get. And he's starting to become a big monster, as it were. He has that Glacial Shroud already. Oh, oh back in towards the middle. You can see Kennen actually having to use his ulti to try and escape from this one. Alex Hitch and Janna ulti. Monsoon goes down. Alex will drop, though. Ghost of Pepper's going to follow. And this is a great dive from CLG here, getting straight on towards him. And that will be the final outer turret there. And Diamonds can do nothing about this one. You know. Ginch has been completely kept out of this game of that top line. Hotshot actually teleporting down, I believe, down towards that bottom to stop Darian pushing. And the inner turret is going to go down for COG as well here. They are really driving forward. And it's actually turned into a pretty strong push strat. Yeah, Nunu Kate is doing a lot of great things there. And because he got oh, ahead Darian's of Darian's going to get caught. Because he got and ahead of Charm. Oh, very man. nice, Ian. Wow, completely <laughs> caught there by Big Fat LP. That will be another kill. 5 1 to CLG. And they are really looking very, very strong in this game. Well, that was phenomenally good by them. They got three unanswered kills right now. Looks like two unanswered turrets, or even three unanswered turrets might be the, the response for that. And CLG putting on a clinic with this game right now. They've, uh, you know, even Big Fat LP, who, who actually got behind in his lane, was still incredibly instrumental in those fights earlier. Well, the charms coming out. This could be scary for them. Hotshot tanking and not caring too much. Traps coming out as well from Caitlyn. Ash, though, has rejoined. This could be a little bit scary for CLG, but Kenan ult. Still down for 40 seconds. They would need that if they wanted to make a comeback right here as CLG is all about half health. 
Yeah, they've got that arrow up, but they haven't gone for anything now. I thought Genja maybe was going to jump onto something, but they did, obviously didn't feel they had the damage. Nocturne continues to chase diamonds. It's like, come on, guys, let's, we can do something here. We can get these guys. They're not completely backing away. They've actually pinged it and said, you know what? I think they're here. Dragon is up. We'll see OG contest this one. They feel they're pretty strong. Not too sure they've got the hit points and mana to do it, but they are going to go for it. Remember, the crystalline arrow is up. Whether we're going to see it popping straight out? No. Howling Gale will go across. They're going to continue to try and pull away that dragon. Alex Eve will pick that up, and now they're going to try and get a chase, and you can see the arrow going across. <laughs> wow, that was a horrific arrow. Completely missing CLG. I'm not even sure what he was aiming at. They'd already split apart way before he even shot it. Yeah, well, they don't have any map vision that far down, though, is the thing. You look at the, the Moscow 5 uh, map vision, and it's, it's pretty much zero. Saint, without early oracles, still has not died. And, well, that's going to be really good for you when you keep sweeping wards the whole game like that. So, uh, Blind Arrow did not manage to land anything, and, and then they're like, okay, well, at least we got Dragon. Then Moscow 5 did get Dragon for that, and they're going to get the first turret kill of the game as well, so they're getting themselves slightly back into it, even if just fortunately. So, that is a tower, and that's... That's just something they are. 5k behind in gold. Moscow 5, remember, picking up that first game, so it would make things all square if CLG were to take this one, but it is very early days, and there could easily be a quick Baron swap kill. And uh, the ping has gone down on Baron from CLG here, so Di Moscow 5 are actually in the area, though, so they have a little bit of coverage, and now they're going to see St. Vicious taking out that ward, so they're going to see that they've actually pulled in. Moscow 5, are they in position? Actually, they are. The only person missing is going to be the uh, support player of Gozu Pepper. He's going to get in there. The ward gets placed again. This Baron already down half health. Volley goes across. They do have a hawk shot available. Alex coming in. Diamond's going to dive in with the ulti. Alex dives in, follows. They haven't got it down towards uh, Smite ability. So the Alex is just going to get caught out. Chowster taking out very low. Chowster will not get picked up, though. Darian instead is going to go very low. Darian just about hanging on in the monsoon. Genji will get taken out. CLG surviving beautifully in amongst that fight. What a superb kill. And they will just let Gozu Pepper go and go back to pick up that Baron. Wow, a four for one there. That is a clear, clear victory for CLG. They might Absolutely be too low. Absolutely very strong. Combat Jana, I mean, I called it before. <laughs> Combat Jana might just crush their faces. Chowster getting really low. Jana could actually get this one. Oh my gosh, come on. I just want to, I want this kill. Please, go see Pepper. I believe in you. You can do this. There's oh, one there kill on St. Vicious. Almost get the second. No, Chowster's going to survive. But the Baron could kill double it. And I think she has assist credits on everyone. And looks like Big Cuddle P going to get really low. Almost drops down to Baron. That was really close. Okay, <laughs> CLG, pick up Baron. I, I wanted that to happen, kind of. That would have been fun. But right. Hotshot did manage to spawn and get that Baron up. It was very close, actually, there. So we're seeing uh, desperation moves. That's when the Brilliant Spots start coming out. And we do have the Abyssal Scepter, though, on Alex. And the, uh, the Royal is nearly complete. You can see Genja has got the Infinity Edge. Double Lifter uh, had that Infinity Edge a long time ago. He's now got the Zeal on there as well. 189 CS looking very strong. And the question is, you know, can they do anything about this huge Colossus dinosaur that is uh, Hotshot GG or Alien, I guess you should say. It's not technically a dinosaur, is it? He just needs to build his, uh, his uh, stacks up of uh, Feast. That's the one I'm after. He's mm -hmm. down to four. Obviously, did die in that fight. But it uh, shouldn't take him too long. But... What are Moscow 5 going to do about this? They've just missed out on the Baron. They're going to have to turtle it something chronic. They're already into their own base. I'm not too sure if there's any way out of this for them. Well, they, they do have a, a good AOE late game comp. The unfortunate thing is Darian is not having a good game right here. He's only got 170 ability power. He's only level 13. And, uh, I mean, that's the same level as the duo AD of double lift right there. So that is not a good place to be in if you're this Vladimir. He's going to try to catch up. You can see they're leaving him this bottom lane to farm. Moscow 5 running across their own jungle and picking up some more of these, you know, some more golden experience, which they do desperately need. Uh, but I think the longer this game goes on, I think the better chance they have, especially if they can actually land an Ash Arrow. I think he's pretty much 0 for 5 on Jenna Crystal Arrows. I didn't even see what happened with the Ash Arrow at the, uh, at the Baron fight, but it seemed to not do a whole heck of a lot. So if Genja, you know, Genja has Infinity Edge now, he's going to be a very scary guy. I mean, he's, he's behind a Phantom Dancer, to be sure, but... I mean, they have the ability to deal a lot of damage here, and we'll just see if they can actually get themselves, uh, you know, a free pick or two, because they have some good CC on this team. So the blue buff has spawned. They're going to go back across. Actually, they're going to try and catch out a hot shot. No, he's backed away fair enough from that distance, and he's just going to 
quite happily go. Meanwhile, CLG, I think, are going to take this top turret before Moscow 5 react. Same vision's already in there. They have cleared that uh, wave, and they are going to go straight towards you. You can see Janna, the only one that's actually responded, not going to be able to do a great deal. So this is going to be the final inner turret going down. CLG are just going to tank that one up to start with, and that will be double lift hammering away. It will go down very quickly before anyone can react. And that was a little sloppy from Moscow 5 not to react to that push along the top there. So now they have a wave of minions coming in the top. Meanwhile, you can see that Darian is having a fight with Hotshot GG. I'm not too sure whether how this one's going to go. You can see a barrel up Hotshot is feeling very strong. Looks like he's already used the, uh, the feast on him. So actually, no, he's got it still available. He could try and get in there. Oh, and he just pulls away from the rupture there. And that would have been Darian, I think, dead. I'm trying to see how much that feast would do. It would be, no, it didn't. yeah, it's only, it's only just over 500 at the moment, so wouldn't quite have been enough. He had to get another 500 hit points off him. Moscow 5 now have to deal with this top push. It is a barren top, top push as well. And you know what? This is going to be a do-or-die move if CLG go for it, but I don't think they're going to push it yet. I'm not too sure they're quite confident enough to push onto a tower. Especially the hotshot split. Yeah, well, the one thing they will do, though, is hotshot has someone to teleport, so it's their age-old strategy of hotshot pushes bottom, the rest of the team pushes top, mm. and if you really, really have to, summon a TP up there or use a channel or just beat Udyr and don't care. Um, but right now, hotshot, I mean, just, yeah, again, forcing Darian to use that blood pool, get himself out of the way, and here comes more of CLG, though St. Pierre's running across, and there's Nunu and Caitlyn, big fellow P there as well. Fully slowed them down slightly, but they're still ready to go into this fight. This turret is low, 718 health. Another mini wave will be here soon. Double lift AoE spamming those out. And we'll see what they can do. Another rupture comes out that's going to land on Darien. They will not follow through with anything yet. No, Moscow 5 would be crazy to actually lurch the way out of this. They need to just let CLG come at them. They have that Baron still. It's got. Uh, oh, just timed out. Just, just timed out, yeah, literally as I looked at it. So the Baron buff now gone. Darien, well, he keeps getting picked away, but. He's obviously got that life steal straight away. He can just try and hive that uh, damage back. And actually, CLG trying to draw Moscow 5 out, trying to say, yeah, we'll fight you away from that turret. But uh, I don't think Moscow 5 are going to fall for it. We have seen some crazy dives from teams before, and you just think, what are you doing? Why did you do that? But yeah, I don't think they're going to fall for it. You can see the top lane is actually kind of dealing with itself at the moment. There will be another wave of minions coming in shortly. CLG going to try to maybe follow this up. It doesn't matter because Double Lift, every time he gets in there, he's getting a single shot on towards that tower and slowly chipping away at it. Yep, they've got, they've <laughs> they've got about five waves to go until that fully falls off. 29 and change, this, surely. 29 and change is going to be that Baron uh, respawn. It looks like CLG going to let this go for now. They do not have a Shirelias that I can tell. Looks like uh, Nuni went for a fast Aegis instead, so relying on, on combat strength and not so much on the mobility. But Dragon's back up and CLG is like, even, I'm surprised actually because CLG knows they're stronger than them, but doesn't want to go for the fight here. So they really, really, really just do not want to want to press any unfortunate circumstances. I'm surprised they were more willing to fight under a turret than near Dragon, but they will recall back. They will buy some new items. Looks like they were pretty individually rich. Oh, and of course, Cho, in response to Dragon, goes for a turret. Yeah, he was teleported up there, but I think that's a mistake. He's going to get caught out. They were quick to react to this one. The arrow... Oh! Flash is just away from it. Alex is actually going in towards a trap as well. Nocton will get on him. The fear will go off eventually. No, he manages to use it with a rupture. But Hotshot GG completely cut out of position. I'm not too sure who made that call, but I don't think it was the right one to do. And Moscow 5 will happily pick up a free kill. It took five of them to get onto that big beastie, but he did manage to go down. Yep. I, got, I got a question that call. Uh, yeah, it ended up being a huge mistake. Now, thankfully for CLG, they've still got a minute and a quarter till Baron, so they're not going to give away the game uh, against all authority style. But this is not looking too happy for them as, uh, you know, the buff's going to come back into Moscow 5's favor. They had full map control, and now Moscow 5 is going to pick everything back up for themselves. Ari just got her own blue buff. But I think uh, Moscow 5 should be coming back before too long. Now, Silji is still in the advantage here, but I think, I think you know, both teams have a shot for sure in this game. The gold lead was almost 10,000. It's down only to about 7,000 now. And, I mean, chopping down the 3,000 gold lead takes some effort, and Moscow 5 have done that so far, and they can keep up on that trend. Yeah, you just look at the gold difference. You can see Caitlyn is 2,000 gold ahead of his uh, compadre, which is Genja on Ash. 505 double lift at the moment played a very good game has got that phantom dancer infinity edge and quick silver sash now completed and why you can see that uh, needlessly large rod actually picked up by 
Darian there, so sort of was going towards Arrylas and then actually switched and going, yeah, actually I could do with a bit more ability power now. I think, I think I've got the money to go for it. So kind of sort of caught in between at the moment. May have actually been wiser to complete the Rylers, I think, first. But uh, nevertheless, they are far better players than I am, so I'm not going to question any builds. We do see Force of Nature just being bought there by Chogath. So obviously going towards it, and Rylas has been complete by uh, Big Fat LP. So they are all back, they are getting ready. The Baron has spawned, so ready and waiting for this fight. You can see M5 doing their best to actually push all the lanes out. Diamonds is picking up that blue buff. Don't think he's going to give it to anyone. He's going to take it for himself. CLG, they've bought up. They're ready for a big fight here. However, Hotshot is down on feet. He's only got two feet on him at the moment, so he's not going to be quite so big and scary. I want to take a, a quick second as we have here the teams getting ready for what might be a final, uh, could be a final fight in the, in the near future. But I see we actually have all the seats around here filled and everyone actually standing up in rows, blocking the passageways. Guys, everyone in hand over, can I please have you guys cheer for yourselves for being here today for the semifinal match? You guys are awesome. I love you all. You just had to, didn't you? I, I did. I, you like, feel like a rock star now, uh, I'm sure. No, not, not for myself. It's, it's for these <laughs> players. I'm just here to talk about how good they are or to laugh at their mistakes against all throwing Dignitas. Um, but, but seriously, I mean, this is so fun to be here. And, you know, thank you guys for making League what it is. And I'll get off my soapbox now and talk about the game. <laughs> and St. Vicious leading the charge for CLG, pushing up through Hot Shot, not winning his lessons, pushing the right-hand side. Oh, my gosh, they're going to catch up on Darien. They're jumping after him. There's the flash done from St. Vicious. The Randu was used as well, but the whole team is here. Monsoon has used Ashwold save arrow. And a hot shot running back towards mid. Got to be a little bit afraid of Diamonds and Alex, though. But a couple of ultis were used up there, and that was kind of forced as well. And all, I, all that CLG used was a single flash to actually cause that. So Monsoon already down. I think Vlad pulled away, so he didn't have to use anything too drastically. But uh, Monsoon is quite a big one. And like you mentioned, oh, they're going to dive in towards Hotshot GG. They will get the Fear proc off. The Ashton Harrow <laughs> will finally land. I mean, it couldn't really miss that time around. Howling Gale will go across. And Ashton's going to put CLG in a little bit of problems now because they are one man down with the Baron spawn. So Melsko 5 are going to try and drive this one forward. You know, you talked about the, the Baron steal that we had earlier on. Some of the change arounds we've had in these fights. Could this be the moment for Moscow 5? I don't think CLG are going to surely let them just take this one away quite freely. You can see CLG are going to move moving towards it. It has been knocked down. It is already half health, so CLG going to have to get in there. Will they peel off in time to go for the right thing? It is going to be the Ken and ulti they need to do. You can see Alex is just off at the side. Wants to try and land those shurikens. His double left they're going to go for. Does manage to land the ulti. Will Vlad get in in time? He will do. Big for LP is going to get away from that one. Meanwhile, you can see the rest of the team getting caught out. Genja actually being focused by St. Vicious. St. Vicious will go down, though. Double lift and Big for LP can do nothing about this one. Chowster will just about flash away from the fear. And Moscow 5 cleverly turn around and go back towards Baron, this could be a turning point, and it's not the turning point CLG wanted to see. Yep, they're going to go from 40,000 gold. We'll see how much that ticks up once they've killed the Baron off. The minion waves, actually a big one coming up top. Unfortunately, Hotshot, he's got 10 seconds left in the summoner teleport. There's the Baron drop down, 41.6. Now still the 5,000 gold advantage, but as we saw from Dignitas vs. Fnatic, just the, the momentum of getting Baron and winning a fight, it was almost like the morale boost was worth more than the gold difference at that point. And these teams suddenly got these big surges of energy. And, and Moscow 5 have looked completely on point for the last 12 minutes here. And CLG, they almost look lost. They, you know, they, they seem to have a great strategy here of, okay, poke the turret, poke the turret, poke the turret. 210 health left on it. And then they just stopped killing a turret with two attacks left on it. And, and they sort of didn't gank Baron with a 10,000 gold advantage, and then they, they started splitting off and getting caught. But the team with two global ultimates, by the way, where Nocturne and, and Ash can pretty much pick on anyone they want and enable a kill there, and, and I'm, I'm surprised, Sealed, you're normally so good at closing out games and so good at sort of ending these in, in situations where they know they have advantages, and, and they just don't look like themselves right now. Yeah, so COG, well, they've got to be careful and they are going to back away. So they're going to say, Moscow 5, it's your turn to push. They do have all their inner turrets, so let's not, let's not get carried away here. They've got a long way to go, Moscow 5, to actually get in and take this one. They are going to go towards Dragon, and we've not seen COG contest this. Even when they had the advantage in the team fights, that could have been a turning point. You know, they could have gone towards contest that Dragon earlier on when they were all down in that push, and they said, no, we're going to let them have it. We're going to back away from it. And so Moscow 5 will pack that up, and you can see the gold is starting to close in. It's a 4K difference. It's which is not too great compared to, say, the 20k difference we saw with Dignitas against the Authority earlier yep. on. Moscow 5 are just going to continue clearing the lane. St. Vicious is pushed up quite far, but he realizes that Moscow 5 are a long way away from this one, so they're not too worried. Darian will probably head him off. So, 
I'm not seeing Moscow 5 actually using a massive advantage here. They have to, have to surely use the advantage of having Baron to actually try and turn the game for them. But instead, they are just fighting fires at the moment and keeping these lanes clear. Yeah, and uh, you can see kind of the, the map vision is sort of s supports that, right? You can see how far along these minions are, uh, you know, into uh, M5's sort of base. Uh, only the bot lane really even close, and it's pretty much Hotshot freezing that one for a little while and actually whipping the minion kill, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, Daring going to go ahead and try to... And it seems like both these teams really are just trying to clear these waves out and kind of get themselves more map control, take the boss for themselves. Uh, I know CLG wants to push them out so that they don't get pushed uh, too quickly. They want to keep as many turrets up as possible. They've still only lost one the entire game, which is really, really good discipline as a team to not give up these pushes here. Um, and and you know, I think the best thing for them would be to keep this map control and to keep themselves from losing any more global objectives. So even if they get aced in a really horrible team fight, there's no way Moscow 5 can push through three turrets and a nexus. So uh, CLG is doing a good job keeping their, the map kind of in their control. So Clairbone is used to actually pick up their own blue buff there. So Genja will pick that up. I'm just looking towards COG. They, they are doing the right thing here. They're just like, okay, they've got Baron. We're going to keep them occupied. We're going to keep these lanes pushed. St. Vicious going back towards the top. He's going to clear that out. No, we'll just see whether they're going to manage to catch on. Hotshot, is he going to try and protect this turret? Will they collapse around him? Does Darian and Diamonds think they can take him on the turret? I'm not convinced about this one. I think Hotshot might actually give up his tower. Yes, he will do. And they will manage to take it down. So one turret coming down. There's only a minute left on Baron. In fact, just le less than that now. So this Baron buff is going to run out very soon. So Moscow 5 not really driving an advantage result. And I think they were just happy to get the Baron in the first place. Yeah, I think they wanted that to kind of stem the tide. And the thing is, I think they do know they're down still in gold a little bit. And a 4,000 gold lead matters a whole lot. If you spawned with 4,000 bonus gold, you'd pretty much win immediately. But in a 35-minute game, 4,000 gold doesn't, doesn't hurt quite so much anymore. And so they, I think they wanted to use that to, to sort of stop the bleeding and kind of regroup and say, look, our late game is ridiculous. We've got Vladimir Kennen. We have great AOE ultimates here. Nocturne going to keep scaling up as a bruiser. He did kind of go for a, a mid-game build by going for, for Regals plus Aegis. But now he's got the Chain Vest, the Phage. He's going to get probably that, that at Mallet build going. And he's going to get uh, much scarier than St. Vicious is right now. And St. Vicious kind of, um, you know, has a lot of power there. He's kind of offense-focused. But Ash is, Ash is getting scary as well. I mean, you know, Moscow 5, I think they, just, they really want to kind of keep this game up for another few minutes and then say, okay, Baron's out. Okay, we're safe. You know, CLG are definitely disciplined enough to not take a fight against Baron buff. And they've done that successfully so far. But now I think they want CLG to get a little bit confident, go for a push again, and then just open up with stuns and just fire down everything. And it's the split push again. You can see that uh, CLG, four members, running along the top lane. Meanwhile, Hotshot tries to go along the bottom. Darian heading him off. They will manage to get there in time to block it off. But remember, there is only 210 health on that bottom turret, so it is quite open. Now, Darian is actually heading north away from Hotshot GG there, where he's just picking up the wolves, he's quite happy to uh, cover that off, but Hotshot only needs to really get onto it. I think Diamonds, yeah, he's going to drift down there. I think they're going to try to get a cheeky gank on towards Hotshot here. He's just baiting him around, dodges out of the way of it. He's going to continue on. Here comes Diamonds, he's going to dive in. Hotshot's had to flash out. Diamonds follows him. Can he manage to get close enough to get the fear proc? No, he won't. They're going to react and go straight back towards the top lane. Remember, teleport is up now, so Hotshot could easily switch it up and say, right, I've pulled two, your two action here. I'm going to go straight up top and try and push on towards that tower. They're not going to go for it though, and wisely so. So the standoff continues. Yeah, but Diamond's actually, and Darian both looping around the bottom side. CLG knows they need to be a little bit aware of this. The uh, Ash uh, Hawkshot does reveal that they know where CLG is. Hotshot still pushing up there. I think he's going to recall by and then uh, push towards, um, uh, push back. Uh, no, he's actually staying in the brush and coming back for the push. He's really just trying to pull that, that aggression because, again, if Moscow 5 leaves him for two seconds, he'll get the turret. And an open hit means CLG gets the, gets the inhibitor for free. So Hotshot actually getting scared away by Darian. Darian's scaling throughout this game quite well. Has his death cap, has the will of the ancient, so that, those have been stacked now. Uh, and, and CLG, uh, again, they still look a little bit lost here. It almost seems like... This Hotshot GG split push, I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to work anymore. I think Vladimir is scary enough now. Yeah, I think it's, it's past the point, like you say, it's past the point where it was viable, and now Darian's just quite happily to go 1v1 with him, just bully him away from that lane. Remember, he had like a nearly a 50 CS advantage early on. It is very close now. Well, I'd say very close. It's still 60 CS, but in terms of builds, they're that far along in the gold. It doesn't actually make that much of a difference. You can see 12K on Hotshot. Meanwhile, you can see uh, just 11K 
Oh, and they're going to try and close on towards Hotshot. Remember, he doesn't have flash at the moment. The arrow is going to catch him. Oh, and he just turned round straight into it there. Has managed to get away with it. Will they manage to get a slow on him in time? Clairvoyance has been used. I think the volley shot might just about catch him in a moment. See Genja trying his best to close it down. He does. He just about catches on the backside of him. Now the slow is on, but Doublelift has come across to try and protect him. And Hotshot will get away with it. And now Moscow 5 really wanted to get that kill. Meanwhile, I think the Dragon probably is due shortly. And Very Moscow cool. 5 continue continue to just pick up the gold advantage they're trying their best to close it down it's now only down to 3k you can see and they are slowly slowly getting back into this game and and looking actually pretty scary yep absolutely the case you can see the gold actually slowly creeping back into uh towards moscow five's favor it's now uh, about three and a half thousand instead of the four thousand from before so these antics back and forth have actually given moscow five 500 gold back uh, you know towards them and i mean theoretically if they keep doing this for the next you know 30 minutes or so they'll have a gold lead but uh clg gonna start clearing out wards and they're actually gonna pressure baron which makes actually a lot of sense here they'll actually make them commit to a fight here and hotshot will almost definitely get a uh, get the turret for free and actually yes the entire team has actually left hotshot alone so if he can push in time he can actually backdoor it if if clg knew all five were over there yeah and of course he can teleport in for a team fight if it was required and Darwin is going to start off that Baron. They have cleared out the vision of it. CLG are pretty aware that it is happening. You can see the turret has gone down. He's now on the inhibitor. Will he come across and react? Just keep your eye on that There's teleport. Here it comes. CLG are going to make a move for this one. Hotshot is going to make his move in towards that tower. You can see Baron actually nearly picked up. They just need to finish it off. And Moscow 5 have picked up Baron now. Can they do anything with it? That's the question. Jan Jana's Monsoon blasting all the way. Chouster will go down in this one. You can see Moscow 5 picking up kills. Left, right and centre. Hotshot is now suddenly the focus. He's going to get caught by that Howling Gale. And Alex which will get that stun. Genja takes him down. And Moscow 5 are in the driving seat once again oh the volley gets on towards big for lp he'll go down and that was a four for nothing exchange from moscow five they now have the gold advantage oh, nearly <laughs> nearly oh, but wow they have a massive advantage in terms of kills you can see it's 10 10 in square but wow moscow five have brought this one back from absolutely nothing i think there was six seven one down at one point yeah and and geez they're gonna push and get another turret this will be actually the gold lead happening for the first time See 58.3 on both sides, and now 59,000. And they're going to go for another turret. They've got another 10 seconds of pretty much free time. And if they get, if they get greedy, they can go for the inhibitor too. It's going to be a little bit scary if they go for it. And they will go for this here. The inhibitor should fall, and they just got through all three outer turrets there on the left-hand side. Got the inhib, and then ran away. Hotshot Big Fat still actually waiting to respawn. Double lift. Still farming up his gold, but he's pretty much out of item space now. He's got pretty much one item left to go. That vamp theater can turn into a bloodthirster. Oh my gosh, they could catch that. They didn't quite catch diamonds. Yeah, they're just teleporting away in time. Darian picking up the dragon as well. That's going to continue to drive that gold advantage to Moscow Fire's favor. Both at 60k nearly, though. 42 minutes into this game. It has been a long one. And you know what? If Moscow 5 take it, it will be all over because CLG have to pick up this win. And it's just, like you say, they seem to have just run out of ideas. When they had that advantage, they were like, OK, the split push is working. We're going to chip on this turret. We got it to 210 health. Let's just go back. We don't need it. Yeah, that made no sense to me. They did finally pick up that turret for themselves there. And uh, if Hotshot had actually like, dropped a ward after he killed the turret, it, like, as though he had inventory slots for it. But if he had dropped the ward, he could have somehow teleported to it later, picked up the inhib at you know, some, some later time in the game. Um, right now, CLG needs to wait out this Baron buff, and they need to rethink how they're going to win a team fight because they don't have that same level of disruption uh, that Moscow 5 has, where they can send Nocturne at Caitlyn and make Caitlyn run back. You know, Chester runs in an ults, and they just Jana pop him, and they don't really care, and he's not, he's not scaring away anybody. And the same with, with Cho'Gath, where you can pretty much easily kite a Cho'Gath, and, and you they know, they're don't not have fighting. the damage either. They're, they're lacking so much in the damage now compared to yeah. Moscow 5. Just look at the builds. I mean, you can see two Rabadon's Death Cap there, double Willy the Ancients, Abyssal Scepter, the Royalers. The two APs are very, very strong. Ash has caught up with Doublelift. Doublelift had a fantastic start. It was miles ahead, but yeah. Ash has actually caught up with them. So now Moscow 5, they're going to continue driving forward. And this tower is not going to last long. I think they could probably tank it up. Yeah, and, and, and Genshin, of course, with a bunch of bonus armor. I mean, he could do it himself if he really wants to. Raptors coming out from Cho'Gath are pretty strong, but nope, this will be another turret kill. Seven to six, the turret lead is still in CLG's favor, but a not for long. It looks like they want to push for another turret here. Yeah, so they're, they're going to drive minions. their way in there. You can see that I think the next wave has got the Siege Minion. That's probably the one they're going to go for, actually. 
catch in the rupture there, Genja, but he's not too worried about it. Genja, with that Guardian Angel as well, that's a big difference between him and Double Lift. So even if he gets targeted, he will easily just pop back up and be back in the fight and expect to see the monsoon probably follow. And they are going to go in towards the turret now. You can see Hot Shots actually tried to take his moment to get in there. Did manage to get the silence across. Alex is just waiting for that one to run down. Darian did get caught out. The Ignite running on him while he pulls up. Oh, Ash Arrow going in. He caught the backside of Hot Shot GG, though. It was the same vicious they tried to get there. So a couple of ulties burned out, but Moscow 5 are still looking very good. They're not going to back away from this one, I don't think. CLG, are they going to switch it up? Yeah, they're going to go down towards the inner turret, and that's a wise move from Moscow 5. They'll just pick up another turret, and that will push their gold further in their favor that's going to take it to a 5k gold advantage as they drive on in towards the bottom turret now CLG have switched around you can see Ari's just gone back so a big fat LP getting back in towards there he's getting the health back double lift is going to push forward can Moscow 5 get caught out here they're going to try to go towards Darian that's probably not the one to go for and you can see actually Hotshot GG taken down very low does get stunned up will they manage to finish him off no just about backing away from this one and Moscow 5 continue to drive on towards that turret you know what CLG are in a little bit of trouble here you can see Hotshot now having to back away from it. I'd expect Moscow 5 to dive at any second. Yep, they've already burnt their Shirelias, which does hurt them a little bit, but knocks him down with his Atma is a very, very scary guy. 220 attack damage, his Ash very close to a full build as well. 273, they've got that Zeke's Fervor on their Janna once again, so still relying on that, even without that extra bruiser at top lane. And they're going to push in. The AOE is coming back everywhere. Hotshot going to land the rupture. They're going to push in on Darian and Alex. Alex going to drop immediately now onto Diamonds. Diamonds down below half health. Genshin has been exhausted. Chouster getting oh, but it doesn't matter. They picked up two so far. And they're going to keep chasing. Ash might actually try to pick up some free kills on herself. Double lift a little bit afraid of her. They pick up two for one so far. Baron buff has timed out. Going to respawn in about two minutes from now. Genja running away pretty successfully here. And we'll see what CLG can do. They've stopped that bleeding. They won a team fight phenomenally. Great crowd control chains there. Killed that cannon with no ultimate whatsoever. Moscow 5 so confident. Genji's going to steal blue buff. Even though they're down in players, they know where CLG are. Yeah, they had to go back and very well timed from CLG. The minute that Baron buff went out, they were straight on them. And it was a good catch from Hotshot GG as well. Managed to catch that rupture underneath them, which launched that attack. So 12-11 in favor of kills for CLG. But the gold advantage you can see is back in Moscow 5's favor. Has been for a while. And Genja teleporting back. You can see they've picked up a fair chunk of gold. 2,500 gold, actually. Once he just sold and bought a BF sword. So he's building towards another Bloodthirst. I guess you can see Janna also switching things around. Has got that Zeke's in there. Got the Shirelli's Reverie as well. But uh, just look at Vlad's build. You can see Vlad with that Ryla's Rabinon's Death Cap, Willie the Ancients, Void Staff. He is going to be hurting and mixed up with that. Uh, the stacked up, sorry, should I say, of Alexic. It's going to be a very scary combo. But they've not been able to initiate. That Ash Arrow has just not been landing in the right place at the right time. Yeah, hitting Shogath, unless he's 1v5, is not really getting no. that many kills there. Um, there was an interesting thing they actually had a little while ago uh, when they were in mid lane, as I think Darian did this on purpose. He got in there and got caught down to about a third health and then troll pooled out. And they almost pulled the entire team into a, into a really, really bad fight. But CLG did not take the bait. Um, but that, that could have been a free, like, you know, Penta Cannon ult. But uh, instead, looks like Moscow 5 actually still feel ag like aggressing here. And I think this is the mistake that CLG um, made is, is, hey, we're winning. Let's stop pushing. And whereas Moscow 5 looks like they, they are wanting to be on CLG's side of the map. They're waiting for Kennen to, to walk back across, of course. He's going to have Zonius pretty soon, and that's going to be even scarier. Um, but it looks like Moscow 5 wants to keep pushing here um, to, to press their advantage instead of sort of split pushing. Indeed. So we've had two Barons already go to Moscow 5. Are we going to wait out for another one, or are they actually going to try and push the advantage? They do see them in wards, though. And they thought about going for CLG there, but they've immediately backed away from it. You can see the multicolored angles of CLG. They are all stacked up. Triple potion, I believe. Quite a few of these at the moment. At least triple or double. Baron has respawned. Moscow 5 are going to go in towards it. CLG are going to react as well. They don't have any coverage of it. You can see they have no idea, but they realize it is there. Darian is actually going to catch them out. Will he manage to get his ulti across them? It's Hotshot GG they're going for. Probably not the best target. If Alex each will dive towards it. Double lift popped in seconds there. Will just about get away. No, he's not going to be getting away from that one, though. And St. Vicious will go down. And that was a clean, clean sweep from Moscow 5 in record speed, I think. And they didn't even bother with Baron. You know, just going to drive in 
towards the base. I believe Moscow 5 are going to be meeting Dignitas in the finals, and what an incredible turnaround for Moscow 5. Oh man, yes, they are going for this turret right now. The inhibitor going to fall, and that's going to be a straight dive for the next. You can see them actually walking in between attacks to get there sooner. They cannot end this game fast enough. I can't believe they even made this comeback. That was phenomenal from them, but there is one turret. They popped the Shrelia just for fun, and the second turret now going to go down. Moscow 5 will take this semi-final. Excellent job by them. GG, you can see them standing up there. Super happy about this one. So it's going to be third and fourth place player coming up after that. That's going to be against all authority versus COG. So third.